And you know what? I was in school. We used to sing something like this. Listen here. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. It's a short trading day today. It's July 3rd, 2023. Great to be with all of you today. My name is Bob Lang, and I run explosiveoptions.net. And um, an amazing, wonderful chat room with some great people in there. Um, if you haven't a chance, have not had a chance to stop by and see what we're doing in the chat room, please do come on over. It's explosiveoptions.net, and you'll see a, a link in there to join us in the chat room. Um, so let's talk about uh, talk about things. Well, Friday, of course, was the last trading day of June. It was the last trading day of the quarter. It was also the last trading day of the first half of 2023. So what's the score at halftime of the year 2023? Well, um, we have S&P 500 is up uh, roughly, uh, let's see here. 16%, 15.92. And if we were going to annualize that, that's an annualized rate of about 30, almost 32% for the year. Of course, we dropped 19.5% last year. We were down at one point over 30% um, and cut that loss a little, a little bit off. Um, the NASDAQ, of course, big, uh, big mover this year, up 38% in uh, 2023. Of course, last year it lost about um, a third of its value, 33%. So it would really have to gain 50% this year to recoup all of those losses from 2022. So we're up 38.7%. If you analyze that out, of course, 77% on the year, if we come up with another second half of 23, which is much like the first half of this year as well. Russell 2000 um, really came on strong last month or so. It was uh, up 7.7% in uh, in June, and it's sporting a 7.3% gain for the year. So basically, the whole entire gain for the Russell 2000 uh, in 2023 came in June. Dow Industrials picking up the rear up 3.78%. was only up 4.35% uh, for the month. The NASDAQ, of course, the SP 500 soaring above 6% uh, during the month. So, uh, Dow Jones Industrial is up only 4%, just under 4%. Um, so obviously we know where the power lies. It's in the S&P 500 and, of course, in the NASDAQ in 2023. We'll see if any of that stuff changes. We've seen a shift uh, more recently into industrial names. Uh, so that may very much help uh, the stocks that are in the Dow Industrials. Of course, they're not all industrials. We do have some technology names in there, too. We have some energy names. Uh, stuff that's not related to industrials, but we'll see what happens um, uh, later on this year. So it could be a could could wind up being a good year for if you, the market rotates into uh, Dow Industrial and smaller cap names. Small cap names, of course, um, uh, a lot of banks, uh, home builders, uh, materials names. So those, those stocks did extremely well um, at this last month. So, uh, so what's going on this morning so far? We have futures are kind of mixed right now. We see the Nasdaq is up a little bit here. The Dow futures are down 75. S&P futures down four and a quarter. Markets are going to close today at one o'clock Eastern time, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific time today. Again, a short day, and then of course markets will be closed tomorrow. So, what is this week like? This week, this week is very similar to the type of week we have during th uh, Thanksgiving week, right? When we have a full session um, for the first three days, then we have a, we're off Thursday, of course, for Thanksgiving, and then a half day session uh, coming in on Friday. So just the opposite of that. So we have a half day Monday, full day off tomorrow, and then three days uh, to go. So later in the week, we have the jobs report coming out on Friday. We have a few preliminary job numbers, the ADP, the jolts, and the jobless claims coming out uh, prior to that, we have the FOMC meeting minutes from the last meeting in June coming out on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, and then a couple other uh, big economic data. We have some ISM data and uh, purchasing manager index or PMI numbers coming out as well, too. So those would be some interesting, interesting data to, to chew on. Next week, I believe we have um, the start of earnings season. Banks coming out. We have, uh, I think we have. Also, uh, inflation data coming out, CPI and PPI for June. So um, so let's talk about, and also, oh, don't forget, next weekend, Prime Day, 
uh, Amazon Prime Day coming up on June, July 11th and 12th. That'll be uh, what is that next Tuesday and Wednesday, a week from uh, week from tomorrow and a uh, week from Wednesday. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. So um, over the weekend, we did have some news from Tesla saying that um, they did exceed their production numbers and um, delivery numbers. Uh, and so the stock is gapping up nicely today. I do have uh, quite a few positions on with Tesla. I have some bull put spreads. I have some long calls and some call spreads as well, too. So those uh, positions are probably going to do well this morning. Um, we see a little up uh, up day on um, on some Chinese names. Alibaba's up a little bit. Baidu's up quite a bit, $5 this morning. Um, I'm trying to push 140, 141. It's the name that I've been watching for a move back into the 140. So um, let's, we'll take a look at that chart in just a moment. Apple's a little bit soft this morning, um, as is uh, Netflix. Um, I wouldn't really look too much into this weakness. These stocks have been extremely strong for the past month or so, month or actually the last couple of months. Um, maybe a bit of a pullback is going to give people an opportunity to get into these names as well, too. So let's take a look at the S&P 500 chart on a monthly basis. We always take a look at the end of the month, right, um, to take a look and see where the uh, MACD is um, in relation to uh, the S&P 500 at the end of the month. Um, and we look for a crossover move. It hasn't quite crossed over yet, folks. It's almost there. Um, so what I like to do is I like to look for a crossover move and then a confirmation the, in the following bar, the following uh, next time frame. So on a monthly chart, obviously, that would be the following month. But if you look over here, the, it's the black line that we want to be above the red line. We got that back in 2020, of course, and then we crossed over and confirmed it. And then it was a nice bull market run into the uh, end of 2022. When we crossed under, it was turned into a bear market. And you know what happened last year, last year 2022, and the early part of this year. So um, what do we have here right now? What we have here right now is a uh, um, the black line is at 92.195. The red line is 92.8. So the red line is actually higher than the black line at the end of the month. So that doesn't, we're not there yet. We're almost there. We've gained a lot of ground up in the last three or four months, and we're right next to it here. But if we get another positive month here, even a slightly lower month, but if a positive month in July, we will have that crossover, but we need a confirmation uh, month, right? So um, if you're waiting for that bull market, if you, if you think that bull market started, or if you're waiting for that bull market, the earliest we could technically get it by, uh, by my readings, would be at the end of August, beginning of September, right? So let's see what happens over the next couple of months. We do have a Fed meeting coming up in, um, uh, in of course, in July. And let's see what the Fed Watch tool is looking at that. So let's see, we have 87% um, chance of a rate hike coming in July. Uh, and then, then we take a look at uh, September, uh, which is the next meeting. And there is a 69% chance, seven, almost 70% chance that we uh, we hang tight um, into uh, into the, into November. And of course, listen, in between July and September, what do we have? We have Jackson Hole, and everybody remembers what happened with Jackson Hole last year. It was a disaster for the bulls, and we we took off to the downside, huge huge monster drop. In, in, in the indices. I don't think that's going to happen again this year because I don't think Powell is going to spook the markets as he did in 2022, but you never know, right? So you have to be prepared for something like that. Um, volatility is extremely low right now. We have the VIX at 13.78. Not many people are worried about markets going down right now. So that could, uh, could be a problem. High complacency, okay? Um, it simply means that, that people have been continuing feeling good about piling money into the equity markets um, as well, too. So I, I don't see that becoming a problem until uh, we get a, a rise in volatility and people starting to get a little bit more uncomfortable um, with uh, with stocks. Let's take a look at the 10-year yield right here. Um, it had moved up to 3.85% um, the other day and uh, came down. 3.84, but we're pushing right above there, right? Right, right at that. We have a, a gap to fill above 3.9, um, and then we have some resistance at 4% if we decide to get up there. Now, what's interesting to note here is that a lot of people have been complaining for the past couple of years about the inverted 
yield curve, right? The inversion of the twos and tens, which was extreme is about 1. Uh, 160 basis points. Well, we're now only down, down about 105 basis points difference. And that, that uh, gap is narrowing. And what is causing it to narrow? It's the, the, the rates on the long end of the curve have, um, there's Tony barking, it's the rates on the long end of the curve have started to creep up towards the short end, okay? It's not the short end that's moving down. It's the long end of the curve that's moving up, right? So as we move up towards those short rates on the uh, on the Fed fund futures, that inversion starts to go away. And when that inversion starts to go away, people start fearing a recession much less than, uh, than, than, than prior days, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, I did say that we were going to take a look at um, stock with that uh, Tesla here. Let's take a look at Tesla here on the chart and Baidu, right? So let's take a look at Tesla here. So Tesla, again, a beautiful uptrend here since the uh, beginning of May. It pulled back for a nice cup and handle pattern over here. We have the nice base here, uh, carved the right side of the base, pulled back to the 20-day moving average last week. And now we're going to blast up higher. We'll see if that 280, 281 level uh, gets penetrated today or later in the week. It could just be a, a spot to do some selling. Um, I'm going to do some selling myself too. I'm going to be selling some uh, some of the uh, calls and buying some of the put spreads back that I that I put on last week. Of course, we do have a holiday coming up uh, tomorrow, and again, a short trading day today. So it might be a good day to to sell some premium. And why is that? It's because normally. Um, we have five days of trading. We only have three and a half days of trading this week. So you, if you're a seller of options, you get that decay working for you in your favor. Selling puts, selling put spreads, selling call spreads, that sort of thing is going to work in your favor if, as that decay over the next day and a half works for you. right. In other words, if you're selling something that's expiring on the 7th, which is Friday, you don't have to worry about the time decay get uh, uh uh working against you right you have that time decay you have one and a half days of free time decay working for you on uh between tomorrow and today so um keep that something to keep in mind over there so baidu is uh, one i was showing you uh mentioning earlier uh, let's see here, let's see here. so and you know, again this is the stock that i told you that one, i really tried to get above um, that 140 area recently and 145 up there is some resistance one above 140 which is the 20-day moving average roughly 139.24 um, that would that would be a positive we have a gap to close up there about 142 roughly and um, get above there we can get a move up towards 150 but it's going to take uh, several days to to get us there so um, that's by do something I'm watching I'm not necessarily getting into it right now um, I see oil prices are up a bit this morning. Um, one name that I added to last week was Oxy um, and also Slumber J. Not great looking charts, but certainly with oil prices ahead um, of the uh, long holiday um, this week. And then also we have the holiday coming up in a couple of months with uh, Labor Day. People are driving and uh, we might see some increases in gas prices over the next couple of months. So um those are a couple of names to to keep an eye on um we do have earnings season coming up and we do have some banks going to be reporting and jp morgan had a really strong day on thursday and followed through on friday this is a stock that i'm long as well too along with um bank of america and uh, which chart doesn't look as good and morgan stanley which is this stock that i um that i have uh, quite a few uh quite a few calls in as well too we get above this 90 dollars level the stock's got some got some uh room to go past uh, into the mid 90s uh, but you know first things first got to get up to that 90 level first all right i'm gonna hold it uh, i'm gonna lay it off lay it down right there right now everybody have, have a great day um remember keep some keep a lot of cash don't do a lot of uh trading today um it's probably going to be a, a pretty volatile trading uh, session of course tomorrow the market's closed so you don't have to worry about that tomorrow. I wish everybody a very happy 4th of July. Um, let's see, what year is it? Is it, um, um, so it's uh, year 247 for um, the United States of America. Year 247. Three more years will be at 250. That'll be in um, year 2026. So happy birthday, America. And uh, we'll see you guys all on Thursday. And uh, 
let's uh, finish it up with a little bit of Ray Charles at the end of the day. Have a great day, everyone. Trade well. I'll see you in the chat room a bit later today. Take care. Bye.